everybody. Today at Marcel's Hockey School, I'll, I'll be taking you through a home shooting workout. If you have the opportunity to practice your shot in your backyard during the summer, it's so important to be doing this because during the winter time, we got only two goalies on the ice, shooting against the boards isn't a lot of fun, and getting enough shots in is often a problem during the regular team winter practices. So if you can work on it during the summertime at home, it's gonna be a huge bonus for you when you hit the ice again in the fall. But you can't just be blasting pucks mindlessly all over the place. You need the right material, you need enough pucks, you need to know what to work on. You need to maybe look at your shot and through video analysis. And I'm gonna be showing you, giving you a whole bunch of tips and tricks today that's gonna make your home shooting practice as effective as possible so you're not wasting time but you're getting the most out of it. Let's get started right away. So for starters, materials. Don't be the guy or the girl who's got five pucks to shoot. I don't know how many times during my coaching career, summertime, parents from some kids I've, I've coached have asked me, hey, do you wanna come over, shoot some pucks with my son or daughter, take a, few, uh, take a quick look at their shot, said, no problem, go over there, and they got five pucks. Well, you're gonna be spending more time picking up the pucks than actually shooting them. You need pucks. I'm gonna kick my bucket, and now I'm gonna have enough pucks. I'd say you need at least 20 pucks to make it effective. I'm not quite sure how many I have here. I think it's around 35, 40 maybe, and that's fine because you don't wanna be, you don't need to be shooting that many pucks in a row. You need a little bit of a rest in between, but at least 20 pucks, preferably around 50. So, second thing, you need a hard surface to shoot off of. I find this really weird shooting off grass. And you also need some kind of a shooting pad to shoot off of. It doesn't have to be a store-bought one. This is homemade, and I'm gonna put, post a link up above to how to make a really easy homemade shooting pad that slides really well. Shooting off the concrete, the puck just doesn't really slide well enough. So, get it, invest in a shooting pad. This one cost me about 30 euros, so maybe 45 or 40 US Canadian dollars. Really cheap. And the third thing is you need something to shoot at. A net, preferably with backstops or shooting tarps are great. And very important in my opinion, is that you also need some targets or something to shoot at. I find psychologically it's a lot more difficult to hit a target or to shoot around a shooter tutor than it is to shoot at an empty net and pick the corner. And on the ice, there's not really an empty net. There's a goalie in it. So <laughs> this is kind of my makeshift shooter tutor shovels and we just built our house. So we got a bunch of these wooden things lying around. It's, it's not very good looking, but it does the job. My favorite would be something like a shooter tutor where you actually have to pick the corners and the rest of it is blocked. I find it's the most realistic, but if you just hang up targets at the rink where our kids practice, we just hang up go-kart tires, works perfectly, but you do need some kind of targets or a shooter tutor to shoot at. I think it's very important psychologically. It's a much better way to practice than against an open net. Got to aim a bit better. So the next point, very important. Figure out what you're going to be practicing. I see a lot of players, they practice and they, they fire a couple of wrist shots off both legs and then they go off the one leg. Then they turn around, do a couple backhands. Oh, that wasn't very good. And then, then they fire some clappers. It's not really focused. Of course, all of these shots are important, but if you're doing them all in one practice, it's kind of like going to a buffet. Yeah, you get a little bit of everything, you get a lot, but it doesn't really taste as good as you, when you ordered from the menu. Focused practice is important. Figure out what kind of shot you wanna to work today. You wanna to work on your regular standard wrist shot, then that's the shot that you're gonna be working on the entire practice. That's gonna allow you to make fine 
fine tune that shot to focus the most on it rather than working or working on many different things and not really getting much out of anything though. So if I'm working on my two footed wrist shot today, then I'm working on my two footed wrist shot. And every shot is a two footed wrist shot. Another thing, what well, you might just have noticed with these last three shots I fired, very bad habit on the ice, players doing this. Stick handle, stick handle, stick handle, shot. So this is a perfect opportunity for you in the summertime, pull the puck onto your shooting pad and fire. Pull the next puck onto your shooting pad and fire. Don't waste too much time. You don't have to hurry every single shot and shoot like a madman, but it's important. Just put the puck on your stick and where it is, you fire it off. So next point, should you be shooting off rollerblades or inline skates? And I find like your standard two footed shot is, it's okay, it's, it's a little bit weird shooting off rollerblades, backhand slap shots, those are all a little bit um, weird. But where I find shooting off rollerblades is really good. I'm gonna move this a tiny bit forward so I don't fall off the patio. Really good, very similar to on ice is your, your one footed shot. <laughs> because all you're doing on ice is gliding forward on one leg, shooting off your inside leg, and on rollerblades is essentially the same thing. You're just rolling on your rollerblade. Also, rollerblades help you get a little bit of extra height. It's more realistic. You also have the option of standing on a pad that makes you a little bit of higher, cutting your stick a little bit shorter, having another stick to shoot with. Those are all options. I think they're, those are minor points, but they would definitely help your shooting practice be a little bit more effective. But I really like roller blades for the one footed shot. You can get a step going. I don't really have the room here, but you can get a little bit of glide going and firing. The only Disadvantage here, obviously. Can't really do it very effectively here. I just wanted to show you because I have to skate through the grass and the dirt all the time to pick up the pucks. But if you're on a sport court where there's just concrete until the net, it is a good option, especially on the one-footed wrist shot. So, and if you've been wondering about what kind of stick is this, what kind of stick I've been using, this is a stick from Vikings Hockey. It's a German startup. They offered to send me a stick to try out. And uh, I'll be honest with you, I quite like it. Um, I generally use CCM and I think this is their top models comparable to the top models of the bigger companies. And what I found really cool about them is that you can customize a whole lot of things without shelling out the money that you would have to shell out in order to get a custom stick. So for example, the length of the shaft, you can say 66 inches, 68 inches, whatever you want, and it will come in the flex that you order. I know we've always had the problem going to the store, picking up a stock stick. It's let's say a 75 flex, and then we chop it off and it's all of a sudden an 85 flex, right? So you can order the length that you want and it will come in that flex. Approximately 10 different kinds of blades that you can order, different grip, um, features and all without the price of a regular custom made stick. So I really like it. And the final point that I wanted to talk about, we live in a day and age where technology is getting more and more advanced. I know I spend too much time on my smartphone, maybe some of you do too, but you can use your smartphone while shooting to do video analysis and it's so important because we never look like we think we look. You might feel awful, you look at the video, it might look pretty good. You might feel great, you look at the video and you have so many issues that you need to correct. So, what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna fire a couple pucks and I'm gonna do a quick video analysis 
for you to, so that you know what to be looking at when you're working on your shot at home. I hope I'm doing a lot of things good, but I'm sure I'm going to find some mistakes as well. So let's take a look at my shot in slow motion. We'll start with the lower body. It's impossible to look at everything all at once. I'll look at the lower body first, see what my legs are doing, pushing off the back leg, taking a step forward onto the front leg. Could be a little bit lower in order to have a little bit better weight transfer. And I'd like to lock out that back leg a little bit more. That might be something that's easier to do on the ice than on off ice, but I think I could get a little bit more of a push off of that back leg to generate a little bit more power, and I could be going a little bit deeper. And let's take a look at my upper body work. What you're gonna see is my top hand does not quite come out as far as I would like it. The farther I can get it out away from my body, the more I can pull back in and generate a little bit more flex. I do generate a fair amount of flex. I'm using a fairly whippy stick. That does help. And my bottom hand, I'd like to pull push it a little bit more into the pad. As well, my follow through you see there goes above parallel. That's not really necessary. I should be following through a little bit more, uh, a little bit lower. And I think if I would push my bottom hand more into the pad, then my follow through would end up being a little bit lower anyways, and I would generate more flex and power in the shot. So still a few things to work on. And here's an interesting freeze frame, actually. You can see that I'm generating quite a bit of flex and you should be looking as well, are you generating enough flex during your shot? And obviously technique plays a role in generating flex, but I know so many players, they use a stick that's simply too stiff and would really profit from going down to a lower flex rating, so a more flexible stick. And I started my pro career actually with 110 flex. I have no idea how I was ever able to shoot with that. And this stick here is a 65 flex. Now, I really wanted to try a 65 flex senior stick. Um, it's a little bit too whippy for me, but I use very comfortably a 70 flex stick, feel very comfortable with it, and I weigh 90 kilos. I recommend you definitely going with a lower flex rating than your weight in kilos. So that's it for this hockey shooting practice at Marcel's Hockey School. How many shots should you be taking in a workout? I'd say it's about 200 is a good number. Remember, it's much more important to be consistent and shoot almost every day in the summertime than to fire 500 pucks and then leave it out for another six days. It's also healthier because firing 500 pucks is not gonna be very effective. Your muscles are just gonna be out of whack at the end. And make sure to take some breaks. You don't need to fire 200 pucks all at once. Fire 20, refocus, reset, and then fire your next batch. And if you work on your shot effectively during the summertime, you are going to be noticing the differences in the winter. So I wish you all an awesome summer practice. Fire those pucks if you can. I think I really need a better shooter tutor. And see you next time at Marcel's Hockey School.